Join us on one of the best itinerary trips you can take through the southern half of Vietnam. Because of the great weather, you can take this trip any time of year. We're going to visit some of the most popular tourist destinations, share a couple special destinations, and introduce you to locations you might not have heard of. If you like this itinerary, leave a comment and share this video with someone you would like to take this trip with. Since it's the southern half, we're going to be starting in Ho Chi Minh City, formerly known as Saigon. This is a vibrant city with a lot of history, some of which we recommend that you check out for yourself. While here, you might as well get your day started right and have yourself a delicious cup of coffee. Vietnam is known for having some of the best coffee in the world, so you definitely should enjoy it while you're here. Speaking of getting your day started right, let's start today off with some Bo Nê. There are plenty places available, so just find one and enjoy it. With breakfast done and a full day ahead, we recommend going to a couple of the sites right here in town that are either walking distance or a short grab away. Grab is the rideshare app we recommend using here. We use it and recommend it because not only is it affordable, but it's very reliable. Make sure you watch our other Ho Chi Minh videos for specific places we love and recommend you visiting yourselves. There is a lot to see and do here. They have shows, amazing view destinations, sites, food, and everybody here is really friendly. A lot of the locals speak English, so it's easy to stop and ask directions if you need to. After day one, we recommend making day two a trip out to the Coochie Tunnels. There are a lot of different companies that take you out to see the Coochie Tunnels, so no matter which one you choose, it's going to be enjoyable. We recommend taking the early morning tour or the first tour of the day the reason is because that allows you to enjoy the second half of the day back in Ho Chi Minh City. So you can visit anything you might have missed on your first day there. Being able to walk through the Coochie Tunnels is one of those things that you'll have bragging rights of doing. Even though there are a lot of people that do walk through tunnels, it's not as many as you might think. And it's an amazing experience. With doing that and all the other things that they have available for you to do here, this is an amazing trip, but the most important thing is your own personal experience while here. Once your tour is completed, they'll take you back to Ho Chi Minh City where you can go and get yourself some delicious food and enjoy the rest of the afternoon. When it's all said and done, two days in Ho Chi Minh City is a minimum requirement, at least for us anyway. The next city we recommend visiting is Nha Trong. The reason we recommend it next is because it takes a little bit extra effort to get to. However, once you do get to it, it's a very popular tourist destination. For anybody who hasn't seen our latest video, we'll just tell you a little bit about it right now. It's a beachside town, so there's a beautiful beach with swimming and a lot of seafood. And by a lot of seafood, I mean there is a lot of delicious seafood everywhere. We ran into some of our favorites, some of the most delicious food we've been able to eat in a long time. And that's saying something because Vietnam has a lot of delicious food. In addition to the food, this city has a very lively and vibrant nightlife. It's pretty incredible to walk around here at night with the amount of lights and colors that are available for you to enjoy. And that doesn't take away from the sights that you can see during the day, because there are plenty of those as well. For the next city on our itinerary, you can either fly there or you can take a 12 hour overnight train, which is what we really recommend doing. This will give you a chance to not only see some of the countryside in Vietnam, but also be able to take a train in Vietnam, which is an amazing experience. It will also be a little bit cheaper. But price aside, the thing that you really need to understand is the train ride is going to be another part of the adventure. The destination we're talking about going to is the city of Hue. Once the great capital of Vietnam, even though this city is a little bit slower paced now, we recommend going for a couple of reasons. The first reason is that because it once was a capital, there's going to be a palace. This palace used to be known as the Forbidden City and is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. It is also quite amazing. We ended up spending a couple of hours here and saw a lot. However, you could easily spend an entire day and still have a lot more to see. And because of the cultural significance, it's very educational and it can be fun for kids and adults alike. Plus, exploring the palace is pretty amazing, but you've got to keep in mind that it is on the Old Town side of the river. 
That means that at the end of the day, what you really need to do is leave the palace to explore some more of the old town side, where you're going to be able to get some food and souvenirs at rock bottom places and be able to immerse yourself in the culture here. The other aspect of the city is over on the new town side of the river. That side is going to be busier with a more touristy feel to it. That means there's going to be a more lively nightlife, a lot of touristy foods, drinks, and anything else that could satisfy a tourist's needs. After a couple of days in Wei, you're going to want to get up early and catch that train again because we are heading back to the coastline. The city of Da Nang is one of those destinations that makes people want to keep going back. There are so many different tourist attractions here that you're going to need at least two days to be able to see them all. The first place we recommend visiting is something called Marble Mountain. You're going to want to go there early in the morning because it is on a mountaintop area, so it'll be a little bit warmer. There is an elevator that you can take up to the main section but keep in mind once you're at the top there's going to be stairs that you do have to go up and down if you want to explore a little bit so plan on a little hike part of the reason we recommend it is because of the amazing views another aspect is the significant cultural and religious artifacts that are up here you're going to be running into some amazing pagodas and buddhas as well as trails and it's really worth the experience and speaking of significant religious sites, the next place we're going to be recommending is something called Lady Buddha. It's on the northern end of the city. So you're going to be going to the exact opposite side of the city, but we think it's a good place to go either for the second day or for the second half of a day because it has some amazing views and it's more of a casual experience, which means you can be driven up to the height of the site and just walk around without climbing too many stairs. After a couple of days exploring Da Nang, go out and enjoy the nightlife. For starters, they have this night market, which is pretty amazing. Not only do they have a lot of different delicious foods that are available for you to try, but they also have some games and souvenirs. It's a great place for adults, kids, everybody to just go relax and have some fun. But it gets even better than that. Not too far from the night market is going to be the Dragon Bridge. And yes, it does look like a dragon. The significance of the Dragon Bridge is that it does something that no other bridge that I know of does. And that is on the weekends, it breathes fire. You can see a schedule online or plan to be here on a Friday, Saturday or Sunday. For our next destination, we're taking a boat out to the Cham Islands. This is one of those destinations that recently got put onto our favorites destination list. The main thing to know about the Cham Islands is how easy it is to relax here. It is so calm and peaceful. So let's talk about some of the main points. The first point we want to make is how many tourists there actually are here. This is one of those hidden gems where there are not going to be a whole lot of tourists, but it's set up for tourism. So you're going to be able to easily find a place to stay, as well as get some delicious food, some of which is actually overlooking the docks or ocean. But you're not going to be fighting any crowds while you're here. And speaking of fighting crowds, they do have several different beaches that you can visit while you're here. Unfortunately, not all the beaches are easily accessible or beautiful. However, they do have some pretty incredible ones. You just have to ask where they are and how to get to them. Part of the reason that not all the beaches are incredible is because this is a fishing village. And that means that all the food here is going to be incredible. Lots of seafood, lots of great prices. Some of the restaurants have touristy prices. However, a lot of the locals will catch their own fish and sell you something really delicious for a fair price. And speaking of locals, let us tell you, everybody here was so friendly. And we really felt like we were immersing ourselves into the culture. When Cindy and I travel, we really like to immerse ourselves into the culture a little bit. And if you do too, this is definitely a place. They do have a couple of temples that are here on the island as well. So if you're curious about those and you want to see some of the sites, you can go and visit them. They'll also include a little history of the temples, which is printed in English as well as Vietnamese. You might end up renting a scooter while you're here, but that's not a problem because it's very affordable. There are two main parts of the island. The first main part is where the port is, and that's the central hub and most of the activities. The other main part of the island is basically the rest of the island, which is kind of rural. And that's what you would need the motor scooter for to be able to get to the beaches, be able to go and drive around and see some of the other sites that are available, like the temples. 
However, if you want our opinion on what the best thing to do is, just stay here in town, get yourself a nice little inexpensive place to stay, enjoy the food, and enjoy the overall vibe that this island offers because it is one of those once-in-a-lifetime opportunities or like us, it's going to be one of those places that you're just going to want to keep coming back to. This island really does promote the whole calm, relaxed, laid-back lifestyle that you've hoped to find while on vacation, and we highly recommend it as one of the last places you go to on your vacation here in Vietnam. For that reason, it is the second-to-last place that we're taking you to explore. In my opinion, the most difficult thing about this island that you really have to do is leaving. The day we had to leave was very sad for us, and we didn't want to go, but we had already made other plans. Our final destination that we want to take you is probably one of the most popular places in Vietnam. This is going to be Hoi An. Hoi An is one of those places that if you haven't heard about, if you haven't seen the pictures on the internet with the boats on the river, then you probably haven't been on the internet at all. This place is pretty incredible. In my opinion, it is a mega hub for tourism. There is a lot of tourist attractions, places to go, places to stay. It is built for a wide variety of different budgets and personally, one of our favorite places to go in the world. The atmosphere here is going to be a little bit busier than what you're going to get in places like the Cham Islands or Hue. However, it's less busy than what you're going to see in major cities like Ho Chi Minh City and Da Nang. You're also going to be fighting for places to sit in the restaurants or at attractions because of the popularity for tourists around the world, as well as the popularity for tourism right here for the Vietnamese community. This place is so good that even the Vietnamese like to come here and visit. The food here also follows in the traditional Vietnamese fashion, which means it's going to be delicious. And every once in a while, you'll come across one of those places that is a hidden gem here, where the food goes above and beyond delicious. Since it is on a river and close to the ocean, that means there's going to be some really good seafood as well. So we recommend getting some of that while you're here, if you're not allergic anyway. As I mentioned a couple of seconds ago, they do have a light on the river show at night that makes this place one of those locations that has a very busy nightlife. But being busy doesn't mean it's hectic. It is very calm and relaxing, and you'll probably have a great time just walking around and enjoying the atmosphere. Or you can catch yourself a boat and have somebody paddle you up the river for an even more relaxing experience. Once in a while, they're going to have shows that come into town. So if you're lucky enough to catch one of those, you'll enjoy that as well. We've had the chance to see a couple of them over the years that we've been coming here. And every time it's been amazing. Just be aware of the possibility that coming here you might discover that you never want to leave because of how amazing it is. But when you do have to leave, you can catch a grab up to the Da Nang airport and either fly from there to go home or fly from there to go to one of the other major hubs in Vietnam, Ho Chi Minh City or Hanoi, in order to get home because those are the three international airports that will get you to where you need to go. Once again, if you have any questions or you're curious about any of the other specific places to visit in the southern half of Vietnam, please let us know in the comments. We'd love to help you have the best vacation experience possible right here in Vietnam. If you like this video, make sure you hit that like button. And if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button and ring the bell for notifications so that you can continue to follow along with us as we continue on this adventure. And as always, squeeze the day and be well.